Can you tell us uh, how we got here? How did this all go down? Yeah, well, as, as I reported last week, Pochettino became the focus of the search. He was the top target for the U.S. for U.S. Soccer Federation when they believed that they had a shot to get him a manager of his profile. I think this is exactly what U.S. Soccer knew they needed going into this coaching search. Um, around this team, coming off of the disappointment of the Copa America, I think even when you consider the Emma Hayes hire for the U.S. Women's National Team, we know that this search started off by calling Jurgen Klopp. And I think that signaled the idea that U.S. soccer wanted a high-profile manager to take this job, somebody that could command the respect of the players in the locker room, the fan base, to, to command the respect of the audience globally. Um, and, and that speaks to the aspirations of this team around the 2026 World Cup. Um, obviously, the fact that Pochettino has agreed to the deal is the first big step. Now it's about trying to kind of get the terms of the deal done, finalized, and signed so that he is officially the U.S. men's national team manager. There still are some steps to actually get to that point. Um, but, you know, clearly the conversations over the last few weeks have gone well, um, and there, there's a belief that, that he um, is ready to, to step in and, and start getting going with the U.S. men's national team. Paul, can, do you have any insight on what made Pochettino say this is the job for me because I can't imagine it's a money thing. This is a manager who could gladly go to Saudi Arabia and, and command the highest fee ever recorded probably for a manager given his, his stature. But what, what led to this conversation to say, you know what, Pochettino is really interested in and to say, actually, I'm ready to agree. Yeah, well, I think, you know, look at the jobs that he's had. So when it comes to the next step at the club level, you know, I think Pochettino wants to go to a, a top, top club next, right? He's been at Chelsea. He's been at PSG with some incredibly high-profile players there, right? He, he was at Tottenham and took him to a Champions League final. So when it came to the jobs that would be next, that would naturally be the next step for him, Manchester United, Real Madrid, Barcelona, those jobs aren't open right now. And I think that opened the door for a national team program to make a pitch to Pochettino. He has said in the past, I saw an interview he did when he was in Qatar at the World Cup, that he would be open to coaching a national team one day, that he understands that it's a different type of job, but it's something that intrigues him. The, the allure of coaching at a World Cup, I think, is special for anyone who's been around the game. And I think the fact that there wasn't a clear next step for him at the club level, that gave that window of opportunity for U.S. soccer to come in and pitch the idea. And I think also there's an understanding of why this job is a high profile job, right? You're obviously it's not a, a program like Brazil or England that's, you know, the team's going to be going in and people are going to be talking about them. Can they win the World Cup in kind of a you know more realistic manner? But this is the host country of the World Cup. This is a young group that's got some people believe more potential to do something special than any other group before them. Whether they can live up to that potential is another question. But it's it's not like he's going to some obscure position. He's going to be in the biggest media market in the world, coaching the host country of the World Cup with a group of players who are playing in Europe, who who are recognizable names. And so there's an opportunity to, to do to do something special. And I think that's intriguing to to any manager as well. And I think it's a great fit for U.S. soccer as well. I think it's, for me personally, I think it's awesome to see a manager coming in who also speaks Spanish, who's got an opportunity to capture mm -hmm. this entire American audience as well. Paul, just, just to follow up on that, we know that the biggest clubs in the world are the only thing that would interest him at this point. What's to say, if he does sign with the U.S. men's national team, that Man United opens up, Ten Hag is sacked, Hansi Flick is sacked, and now these positions are open, and guess what? They go after, go after a manager uh, uh, like Pochettino. Is it secure that he's going to see this contract through for sure, no matter what? Or is there still an element of, oh, he could leave if the, one of those jobs opens up? I mean, it's the great part of having a high-profile manager, right? I mean... That's, that's just the reality of this business. You, when you have a high-profile manager, then it's, I said something, right, that if, if Real Madrid or Barcelona or Manchester United opened up, now U.S. soccer has to worry about whether or not their manager would take that job. I think those are champagne problems for U.S. soccer. If you're Mauricio Pochettino, I think if you're taking this job, you know you're taking it through 2026, through the summer of 2026. And in this world of football, Manchester United's job will probably be, if it opens this winter, it'll probably be, be open again in two winters after that. And same with Barcelona and same with Real Madrid. You know, there's always going to be these coaching turnovers at these major clubs. It just so happens that the timing right now, I think, fit U.S. soccer. It, it gave them a chance to go get him. 
And, you know, I, I would expect that the, obviously the conversations with Pochettino around taking this job are, hey, we need someone to come in for the next two years, be our manager through the end of the 2026 World Cup, do something special with this group. And, and there's a history of other managers who have gone from the club level to the national team game and back to the club level. So it's not as though he won't be able to accomplish that. Um, and I, I think that will be the priority for Mauricio Pochettino. I don't think, um, you know, I don't think he would be taking a job saying, oh, in six months, I'm going to go take the Manchester United job. But again, I think it, it's a champagne problem for the U.S. If once Mauricio Pochettino signs on that dotted line. Paul, we all had these boxes, right, that we wanted to check off, and, and everyone's box was different, whether it was international manager or the wanted someone who's a bit stricter or wanted a big name. or We, we all had a, a different uh, um, sort of criteria for the national team coach. Is there a box that he doesn't check off for you? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I would say I guess the one would be how ready is he and, and capable is he to kind of be – the salesman in the spring of 2026 when U.S. soccer needs somebody to be going on Good Morning America and the Today Show and kind of to the mainstream American audience who don't know anything or know very little about soccer, maybe only pay attention to the biggest names in the sport and the World Cup. And there's a, a sizable chunk of people in this country that that's their interaction with the game. They pay attention at these biggest tournaments and, and not otherwise. And a part of the goal and the aim of hosting the World Cup is to convert as many of those people as possible to being fans and supporters of the national team and of the sport in general. Um, and I think part of being the manager of the, the U.S. men's national team is to do that. Um, I think when you're the manager of those big clubs around the world in Europe, um, the media obligations are different. The expectations are different. But I, I think Pochettino understands what he's walking into. Um, and, you know, hopefully his comfort level will be strong enough to go and do some of that marketing stuff. But I think what I like about this is that that side of it, the, the realities that exist around marketing this game and this sport didn't outweigh the soccer side of it. And I think that was the priority for me, at least going into this coaching search that, you know, at the end of the day, if the U.S. soccer goes into that tournament and does really well and makes a run and has all this attention, that's going to do more for selling the sport than anything in the lead up to the tournament. Tenorio, do you know if he's going to have to live in Chicago? I don't know what the conversations have been like about where he'll live. I know a lot of the coaches, Emma Hayes, I believe, is moving to Atlanta, not Chicago, because the Federation will be moving. Um, I'm not sure what Pochettino will do. I believe he's based in Spain right now. Um, I'm sure he also has a place in London. So I'm sure that's part of the kind of the final details of the discussion of, of where are you going to live, where are you going to be based. And um, those parts of the, those details, not quite sure yet. Um, but I, I would imagine that there will be some flexibility based on what he wants to I do. I heard Overland Park, Kansas City. <laughs> it, 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 it sounds, Does it really matter? It sounds right. It sounds like all of these requirements that there were previously surrounding a lot of candidates, the cognitive tests, the obligation to live in Chicago. Oh, yeah, no. Once no you get to this level of I'm man, assuming he passed that, that test. That was, what, that was going to be my, my, my question, Paul. We you know, kind of heard about this sort of strenuous process that a lot of candidates, when they rehired Greg Berhalter, that he had to go through. Through to, to get the job. I imagine they kind of had to throw that all out the window with a name like, like Pochettino. Uh, do you have any insight as to kind of what the, the conversations were like and what the timeline was when they reached out and when they kind of came to this agreement? Yeah, so I, I would say that I know that for this process, there were coaches who were put through that same round of testing that happened for Greg Berhalter and Jesse Marsh the last time around. I'm not sure if Mauricio Pochettino was asked to do those tests. Maybe he was. <laughs> Um, I would imagine maybe more it's like, a, you know, hanging out over dinner, a fancy dinner somewhere and, and talking about. It's a great cognitive test. <laughs> a, a little bit. Yeah, you can get some cognitive testing at a, a, a nice dinner with a glass of wine, I think. Um, that's certainly what I claim. Uh, yeah, I, they reached out to him, um, you know, pretty early in the process. Uh, the conversations have unfolded, multiple conversations over, uh, over the last few weeks of this coaching search. Um, and it seems like in the last few days they were able to kind of get things over the line um, to get him to agree to be the manager. And like I said, there are still some boxes that have to be checked, um, some details that have to be firmed up, and the paperwork still has to be signed. It's not a done deal official yet. He's agreed to become the next manager. Um, but, you know, it, it seems as though they're on the same page for how to move forward, um, that he wants the job. And I think that was the biggest hurdle to go. Okay, yes, I would like to be the manager of the U.S. men's national team. We're going to do this. 
now you kind of get through those those last few things. Obviously, um, you know, he he left Chelsea in a mutual agreement. Usually around that, there's severance terms, things like that. I'm sure that's a part of the discussion as well. Um, you know, what how the salary is structured, all of those different things need to kind of be hashed out. Um, but we're at this place now where Pochettino has agreed to be the manager, and, and that's the most important fact. And now he'll move forward and kind of building out his staff, um, determining when he gets over to the U.S. for the first time. September window is not too far around the corner. Obviously, there's games in October and November as well, and um, and and the era will begin under Mauricio Pochettino. Yeah, so, Paul, last one with, with that. Uh, any chance that we see him in that September window on the sideline, or, or is that too soon to work out all of these details? Yeah, I mean, I know U.S. soccer had been planning to have Mikey Veras as the coach in the September window, whether or not they had made gotten this deal over the line. You know, the belief was we'll probably need somebody else on the sideline for the actual game to give Pochettino enough time to kind of figure out his staff, get adjusted, get to know the players, start to figure out, is he going to move? What's the situation going to be? I've heard there may be some wiggle room in that now, that, that Pochettino may actually be the one who is coaching on the sidelines in September if the deal is signed and done by then. Um, I, again, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up being Mikey Veras on the sideline because of the fact that it's not just Pochettino, right? You have to get your staff settled and, and selected and all those different things. Um, but it, there is a possibility that we, I, I think a strong possibility that we at least see him with the group and, and around the team going into that September camp. Paul, we had you on last week and you had kind of alluded to there was a big name that was out there. I'm assuming that uh, Pochettino was, was that name. Uh, but who were potentially some of the other candidates that were also in the mix? Uh, we had heard about Matarazzo, but that fell through. Um, did you hear any other names that, that they were considering? Yeah, one other name that I heard um, from multiple sources was Patrick Vieira, was another manager that they had, they were talking to as well. I think he was an option behind Pochettino, clearly, who was who was the guy that they were really chasing and pushing for. Um, but it kind of gives you an idea of, of the profile of manager. They wanted somebody who was um, a recognizable manager, who, who had a history in the game. Very different, right? Vieira has had a coaching career that's taken a little bit of a different path, but he's known for what he did in his playing career. I think Pochettino had a, a very good playing career for a very long time, but he's known for what he's accomplished as a manager. Um, for me, this is, uh, you know, the highest profile coach that U.S. soccer has ever hired. Um, but but certainly they, they had other candidates they were talking to. And I think Patrick Vieira was um, one of the most prominent names beyond beyond Pochettino. Paul, do we know if, if England was interested in Pochettino? I know there may be, um, you know, a coach that would probably help England, you know, but the Yanks beat them to the punch. Yeah, yeah there were some reports. There were some reports that Pochettino was a candidate for the England job as well. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I haven't been told that. I, I can't confirm that. Um, but there were multiple reports that Pochettino was a candidate for England. And I'm, I'm, sur I'm sure U.S. soccer saw those reports as well. Certainly, it's a prominent job, a country with which Pochettino has worked before that he's very familiar with. You know, I was talking with somebody about this last night. Very different types of pressure, right, to take over the U.S. job versus the England job. Um, but I think, you know, certainly would have been a job for someone of his stature. Um, we'll find out, you know, hopefully find out whether or not it was a case of U.S. soccer beating England to the punch or not. You know, England put out a statement last week that they were going to go forward with an interim manager into September and potentially for the rest of the year as they they made their search for the coach. So it may have just been that they weren't ready to, to go yet, to press the button go yet. They wanted some more time to figure out the right coach for the job. Um, but certainly U.S. soccer, I had been told from kind of the jump that they wanted to make this hire quickly. The goal was to get a coach done ahead of the September window, and it seems as though they've accomplished that. Paul, just uh, one more from, from me. How much freedom do you think that U.S. soccer is going to give Pochettino in terms of assembling his staff? Or are they going to want some people that are already in the mix at U.S. soccer to remain? What do you think that's going to look like? Yeah, I'm sure, you know, there, there's a huge backroom staff at U.S. Soccer that I would be surprised if it turned over completely, right? You, there, you have an analytics and data staff. You have the physios that are there. Um, you know, high performance staff goes goes deep, right? Um, certainly, I think Pochettino is going to be given the freedom to add 
significant number of staff members you know his entire coaching staff maybe some some scouts that he wants to bring in um you know we'll see uh, sometimes coaches like to have the physios that they've worked with before be a part of the staff as well uh, i'm sure he'll be given a great deal of latitude in that what will be interesting is to see you know do they ask him or or prefer for him to have an american on the staff of some sort uh, i'm not sure of those discussions at this point but i think you know i wouldn't be surprised to see pochettino come with as many of his backroom staff um, or coaching staffs, as, as we've seen him ha bring with him at Chelsea, at PSG, and the jobs he's held before that. Mm, exciting times. Uh, Paul, thank you so much for taking the time to join us this morning. We really appreciate all the intel.